Now let's see how to make tulip pot petal sleeves. It's called so because the shape of the sleeves looks like a petal, one layer overlapping the other. From your basic short sleeves pattern, cut two more patterns similar to this on any paper. I've already kept this ready. It's the same shape as this. You need to do this if you want to retain your original pattern. This is how a petal sleeve would look. One layer of the sleeve would be overlapping the other and usually the back will be overlapping the front. So this is how roughly it would look. Let me show you how to draft it. You can keep the length more or less. From the center notch mark 2.5 to 3.5 inches. I'll mark it as 3 inches. Do the same on the other side. Now mark a point where you want both the parts of the sleeve to intersect. I'll mark it as 1 inch from the hemline. Now using the straight part of your armhole curve, connect these two points and then take it and blend it to the hemline. Before that, let me just mark here. This is back and this is front part of the sleeve. Now do the same for the front. That is from this marking, 3 inch marking, connect to the intersection point and blend it to the hemline in a smooth curve. This part would be the back and this part would be the front. Now I'll cut the back in this sleeve. Why I cut two patterns is in one of them we'll be cutting the front and in one of them we'll be cutting the back. Before cutting the back let me just trace this front line on the other pattern. There are different ways of doing this and just trying to teach the simplest way possible. With your tracing wheel only trace the second curve that we drew that which belongs to the front part. The tracing wheel marks are visible here. I'll just mark it again so that it's clearly visible. This is the front part. Now cut the sleeve as per the back that is the first curve that we drew. And this part is discarded. It's not needed. Now in this cut as per the marking we have done. And this part is not needed and it's very important to have the center notches on both now match the center notches of the sleeves the back will be kept on front however depending on the look you want you can also keep the front over back but usually back is overlapping the front so this is how the sleeve would be first you'll be finishing the hemline the lower curves of the sleeves of both and then you'll be placing back over the front aligning the notches and you'll be stitching it here at the cap so that it becomes like one and then the sleeve attachment would be same as you would normally do i'll be showing how to cut what are the seam allowances and how to sew it now i'll be cutting the tulip sleeves or petal sleeves on fabric before cutting on fabric, let me explain the grain line for this as it could be a little confusing because of the shape. We will be cutting this on straight grain. This grain line means you should keep the pattern such that this line is parallel to the selvage and same for the other side. You would need to take two layers of fabric 
when you keep one part of the sleeve you will get two of them for two sleeves but i will be taking only one layer as i will be making only one sleeve just to show you how it looks now place the back petal or back part of the sleeve set that the grain line is parallel to the selvage now pin it in place the seam allowance would be 1 cm at the sleeve cap and in the sides same as the seam allowance given on the body for now I'll give it as half an inch and at the lower hemline I'll give it as quarter inch as we'll be finishing this with piping without the cord that is something you have not learned yet so I'll show you piping without the cord now add seam allowance And before removing the pattern, it's very important you mark the center notch of the sleeve. Now cut the fabric. Not the center and not the side seam. Now once you finish cutting, you should have two of this as you would be cutting on two layers of fabric. This is the back. Now similarly cut the front part. Make sure the grain line is parallel to the selvage. Add the same seam allowance like given for back and cut it on two layers of fabric. Now let's see how to sew the tulip sleeves or petal sleeves. This is the front part of the sleeve and this is the right side, this is the wrong side. This is the back part of the sleeve. First we'll be finishing the hemline of back and front. You can finish the hemline with different methods. One method is finishing the hemline with bias strips like you have seen how to finish the neckline. And another method is binding. Third method is cord piping. And in this class I'll show piping without the cord. Take bias strip of around one and quarter to one and half inch width and length should be long enough to go around the sleeve hemline. This is the right side of the front. Keep right on right. Before that, fold quarter of an inch and crease it well with your fingers. And then from the edge mark quarter inch Keep the folded edge on the quarter inch mark that is the raw edge of the folded edges down. Now sew at one eighth of an inch in from the fold. Do not stretch the fabric. This is where I have stretched one eighth of an inch in from the folded edge and the raw edges inside. Now fold over this excess fabric here and iron it in place if you need to. Just fold it over and the white fabric shows here or the piping fabric shows. Now put a stitch quarter inch in from the edge that is to hold this in place. So this is how the piping looks. That is piping without cord. This is how it looks on the right side and this is how it is on the wrong side. Now do the same for the hemline of the back part of the sleeves. I finished the hemline of front and back with piping. These are the right sides of both the pieces. And this is how it looks on the wrong side. Place the back of the sleeve on the front, aligning the center notches. And now we'll be sewing here just to join these two pieces in place. Now we will be attaching with the body armhole. 
the front of the sleeve should go with the front armhole first of all keep right on right and align the center notch of the sleeve to the shoulder seam pin it in place if you need to and then sew at 1 cm from the edge now you can overlock the raw edges and this is how it looks now we'll be going ahead and sewing the side seams in this the back is overlapping the front if you want you can overlap the front or the back and also the length can be changed you can make it longer or shorter hope you watched all the four parts of this class thanks for watching this class see you soon in the next class until then happy sewing